باشی to the heavens as we worship and appreciate God. Tell him, say, Father, I thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for bringing me into your presence. I appreciate you for your faithfulness. Gradually, you are bringing me to the end of the month of August. Appreciate him. Give him thanks. The Lord has been faithful. He has brought you to the 23rd day of the month of August. Give him praise, give him worship, magnify him. Say, Father, we thank you. Daddy, I worship you. I magnify your holy name. Only you deserve my praise. Only you deserve my worship. 
Only you deserve all adoration, all honor, all thanksgiving. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. King of glory, we thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you because while we were yet sinners, Christ has died for us. Thank you because of your love, your thoughts, and your plans for our life. Thank you because you are the one that has brought us to learn at your feet tonight. Father, we ask, O oh God, that you speak to us in Jesus' name. Glorify yourself in our midst, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Before you take your seat, I want you to pray one prayer for yourself. Say, Father, speak to me as an individual this evening. Speak to me as an individual this evening. Please cry unto the heavens. Cry unto the heavens. The Bible says that God answers prayer. And unto him that answer prayer shall the nations gather. Father, speak to us this evening. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. We may please be seated. I want you to welcome your neighbor to the left and to the right and say welcome into God's presence. Thank you for coming in again today. From last week, we started a new series, which is the Ministry of Helps. Ministry of Helps. And we are going to be taking this teaching from now till the last week in September. What do we understand by the Ministry of Helps? Prior to now, we have studied the various ministry gifts that God has given us. That is the office of the apostle, the office of the pastor, the office of a teacher, the office of the prophet, and the office of the evangelist. And we also learned that there are some other offices that are different from the ministry gifts. Not everybody will be a pastor. Not everybody will be an evangelist. Not everybody will be an apostle. Not everybody will be a prophet, and not everybody will be a teacher. But every child of God that is born again is called to serve. Every child of God that is born again is called to serve. No wonder when the Bible, Jesus was speaking in the book of Matthew chapter 28, Matthew chapter 28, he told the, the apostles or the disciples in that time, he says, go ye into all nations and preach the gospel, making disciples of all nations. The mandate given to every believer from Jesus is to go and make disciples. Go and make workers. And I pray that we will not fail him in Jesus' name. And one of the first things you do when you are making somebody a disciple is that you tell the person to be born again and then you begin to train the person. And then it leads us to what we call the ministry gifts. Last week, we looked at the first of the gifts. Last week, we looked at the first of the gifts, which was the gift of the choir. The gift of the choir. And by the grace of God this evening, we'll look at another gift or another ministry, or the ministry of help, that is the ministry of the ushers. Our vision in the Redeemed Christian Church of God is to have every member to be a worker. Every member should be a worker. So when you give your life to Jesus, we are expected to take you through the believers class, the workers in training, and then you begin to serve the Lord. We are trusting God that after this teaching, many of us who are not yet rendering service in any department, the Almighty God would have exposed those departments to you and the Holy Spirit would have inspired you. Our topic again is the Ministry of Helps, Part 2, Ushers. Ministry of Helps, Part 2, Ushers. Please, I want you to ask questions. Every time you need clarification. Our Bible text is taken from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Verse 28. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 
verse 28. And I read from the NIV version. And God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second, prophets, third, teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing or helping, which is also the ministry of helps, gifts of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in our hearts in Jesus' name. Our memory verse is taken from Psalm 84, verse 10. Psalm 84, verse 10. And it's taken from the English Standard Version. I'm going to read it twice, and we will all read it together. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Psalm 84, verse 10. I'm taking it for the second time now. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Psalm 84, verse 10. It was David who wrote or who penned down that particular scripture. Can we take it together after the count of two? You can read from your outline or you can read from your Bible. One, two. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Psalm 84, verse 10. Can we take it one more time after two? One, two. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Psalm 84, verse 10. Who can recite it offhand? Who can recite it offhand? One of the blessings, the, the, the importance of digging deep, Sunday school, house fellowship, is also to equip us with memory verses. To equip us with memory verses. What David said, the meaning is that it is better for him to spend one day in the church than a thousand days elsewhere. How many of us love coming to church? The value of the presence of God cannot be compared to any other place. That is why many at times it is shocking when believers will call you and say, Pastor, I can't come to church on Sunday. And you ask them, why can't they come to church? And the person says, I'm going to party. Some of us are smiling. But you know, a lot of you have called me to tell me that you're not being in church on Sunday because you want to attend party on Sunday. A, a lot of us have done that. David, the man after God's heart and why God loved him so much, always valued the presence of God more than any other place. Let's go into our introduction. We continue the study of the ministry of helps as we look at the ushers. We will seek to understand if ushers existed in the days of the Bible. One of the things that we will establish this evening is whether ushers is even there in the Bible. We will also learn what are the roles of ushers. What are the roles? What duties do ushers perform in the church? Last but not the least, we will learn how to become ushers. Because in this assembly, we need more ushers. The ushers that we have are not enough. We need times three of the current ushers that we have. We need times three of the current number. My prayer is that the Holy Spirit will steer you up in the service of Jesus. 
the word usher cannot be found in the Bible. If you read your Bible from Genesis to Revelation, from Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, to the last verse in the Bible, you will not see the word usher. But it does not mean that the responsibility or the function of ushers does not exist in the Bible. In fact, in the Bible, when you study the Bible, you will discover that ushers were taken from the tribe of the Levites. And if you remember very well, the Levites are the people that God chose and said, I separate this family to myself. They will be the ones working in the church. They will serve as pastors or as priests. They will serve as choristers. They will serve as also ushers. And the word that you will see in the Bible referring to ushers or which has the same role as ushers is the word doorkeeper. Just as David mentioned it in the book of Psalm. Doorkeepers. They are the people that keep the doors. Now let us check our Bibles because this is digging deep. First Chronicles chapter 9 verse 17 to 27. 1 Chronicles chapter 9, verse 17 to 27. We will not read that, but we will read 2 Kings chapter 22, verse 4. 2 Kings chapter 22, verse 4. Uh, A.P. Mufikoya will help us to read that. 2 Kings chapter 22, verse 4. Okay. Thank you very much. God bless you. So he's talking about the keepers of the door. And in that Bible text, it does not only tell us that the ushers are keepers of the door, it also mentions one of the major tasks of ushers. Number one responsibility of ushers is that they are the ones that open the church, they keep the door. They are the ones who lock the church. They are the ones who open the church. They are the ones who arrange the church. They are the ones who coordinate and help people in the course of the service. Without the ushers, the pastor or the service will not flow perfectly. When a first timer comes into the church, it is the ushers that tell the person where to sit. Without the ushers, a first timer can come in and may not know where to sit. But the usher's responsibility, or one of their responsibilities, is to keep the door. In fact, if you have attended the Orthodox churches before, you will discover that during prayer, they don't allow people to enter. During prayer, they will put a rope by the door. How many of us have seen it before? Okay, one. Please put up your hand very well. I want to know those who understand. Okay, one. Only the older people. The younger people have not seen it before. Uh, they've not seen it because when they come to the redeemed Christian church of God, they can stroll in anytime. The pastor may be preaching, they can walk in. But do you know that in Orthodox church, when the sermon is going on, you can't move around. Do you know that in the Orthodox churches, when prayer is going on, they will not allow you in. They would have put a rope by the door. They are the door keepers. So the first responsibility of ushers is that they are door keepers. The other responsibility, the reason why we put only one Bible verse is that you are the one that will supply the rest. And you write it inside your manual. Please, can somebody help us with 1 Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14? Please. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. Please, Mark, can you start all over again? 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. After that, somebody else will help us to read verse 40. Yes, God is not a God of disorderliness, but of peace. And in all the congregation, which means in all the churches, God is always organized. That is one of the reasons why we have worshipers. 
for organization. We have told you that they are keepers of the door. So you can't just walk in. You can't just walk in where we are praying. You can't just walk in while the message is going on. While the message is going on, you cannot be jumping from one seat to the other seat. While the message is going on, you cannot be chatting on your phone. Ushers will tell you stop. While service is going on, you cannot be gisting with your friend. Ushers are to tell you stop. So for those of you that are always angry, when the ushers come and tap you and say stop talking, for those of you that usually frown your face, when I shall say, go and sit down here, you do like this, you frown. And I shall we say, go to the front. You say, lie, lie. I know they go. So, peradventure, you are here this evening. When they were telling you, go and sit in front, you frown your face for the usher. You use your eyes to hide him from up to down. You throw, you roll him up, and then you slam him. Bam. They are doing the work that God has committed into their hands. Please, can we take the second one? Verse 40. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Yes, sir. Do everything properly and in order. Do everything properly and in order. The church of God is a place that is organized. Imagine if message was going on. And then somebody that is sitting in front where the elders used to sit now has a phone call. The person now picks a call. He now ran out of the church. Is, is that one organization? No, answer. Is that one organization? The reason why many people are not answering, especially people on my left, is they are the people that used to pick call in church. Abby? The people on the left, turn to your neighbor say, bro, say sis, do you used to pick call in church? If you are doing it, stop it, oh. Tell your neighbor very well, if you are doing it, stop it, oh. It is not correct. It's not right. In fact, if you are a child of God, people should know the time you are in church. And they should not call you during that time. So if somebody is still calling you during the time of Sunday service, that means most likely that person doesn't know you used to attend church. Now, you tell me other responsibilities of ushers. I've told you, number one, they are the doorkeepers. Number two, they, are, they keep order in the church of God. They are the ones who arrange the church. In many places, apart from arranging, they tell people where to sit. Yes, can you tell me some other things? Beautiful. There's one hand up there. I want us to have as many people as possible. One, two, I want, in fact, I want seven people. And there should be nothing like he has said what I said. He has said what I said. The work of ushers are too many. So one, two, our mom is three. Sister Fife is number four. Yes, I want to share it before everybody. Brother, uh, brother Lekon is number five. I need two more people. Two more people. Work of ushers. If nobody is doing yes, there, my dear sister is going to be taking number. Six and then number seven. Okay, my dear sister, number one. As we have read um, in one of the Bible verses we read, the ushers are those people that gather money together. Because we read it in Second Kings chapter two, verse four, yeah. where the third person. Please let us put our hands together, together for sister, sister Abigail. Abigail. Clap very, very well now. now. They are the people that also gather the money together. And we read it in 2 Kings chapter 22, verse 4. They said the gatekeepers and they should go and count the money with the priest. So ushers are the people that collect the money. That's why when during service, it's the ushers that carry the, bus the basket. It's the ushers. You will not see the pastor carrying offering basket. Ah, uh -uh. It's ushers. And I'm sure some of us used to see the ushers and used to like them the way some of them dress. Because if you see them, they are usually wearing the same uniform. And most of the time, their uniforms are very fine. They are very fine. Yes, number two. Number two. Yes, ma. Hallelujah. Going on. Yes. Ma. I believe the duties of the ushers are when the um, members are sleeping. So you can actually tap the. Thank you. Please let's clap for this. Our mommy very well. 
The ushers also tap the people that are sleeping. But we know in this parish you can't sleep. <laughs> Grandma is laughing. The only thing that can make you sleep is whether you cook over, is when you cook overnight or you went to do other things. It is important as a child of God that you prepare for the Sunday service. Some people will tell me, they say, I, just, I, say, I, I told you, you were shaking and nodding your head. So I will say, why were you doing that during the service? He said, Pastor, I washed throughout the night. No. You don't wash throughout the night. Saturday night is not for washing. Saturday night is for preparing for Sunday service. For a true child of God. Saturday night is not for cooking. Saturday night is to pray and for the service the following day. Ushers also wake people that are, that are sleeping or they also call the attention of people that are distracted. Yes, let's go to grandma. Yes, my number three. They are also, they are also the pastor's wording. If pastor wants to send an error to anybody, the ushers is... The, the Please, let's put our hands together for mommy. In fact, I like the word that mommy used. It says that the ushers are also pastor's wording. Who knows what a wording is? Wording. Yes, brother David. Brother David, what is wording? You are not too... You are, you are a little bit right, right too, but you are not too correct. Wording. One of our mommies want to help. But I expect that our children that we are sending to private school, they should know. Because we are paying school fees. <laughs> wording. There are some words that when you hear them, you just need to look for where they have used them. For example, traffic wording. Okay, let's take our mommy. Our mommy will explain to us. What does the wording mean? In charge of an errand. The, in charge of an errand. Uh, you are saying what Brother David said. You are not totally correct. Wording. Yes, Mommy Ogini. A guide. Thank you, ma'am. Please let's put our hands together for her. As I told you, the key is traffic wording. What does traffic wording do? They control traffic, they guide you. You stop, you pass, you pass, you cross. So when you say somebody is the pastor's wording, the person guides wording. The person also gives direction. He helps the pastor. So one pastor wants to tell another usher something or a member of the church something. It is usher he will send. Because if the pastor is trying to give sign from the altar, doing like this, winking, winking, the person cannot see the eye. And at times, some of the ushers, they may not, they, they may not understand those body language. Some of them will say, ah, he seems fly as enter pastor's eyes. Oh. The way pastor is doing his eye, he's blinking his eye. He seems his fly that enter pastor's eye. They say, ah, sorry, pastor. They will be waving the pastor. They will understand what we mean. Don't worry, relax. So a wording is a guide. A wording is a guide. Yes, let's go to number four. Number four. Brother Pharaoh may leave them. Hmm? Number four. Number four. Number four is at the back now. Brother, uh, yes, sister, we face number four. Yes, the amount of people in church. Ma? The take amount of people in the church. They take the attendance of the people in church. Please, let's put our hands together for her. It is the ushers who take the attendance. It is not the pastor. How many can pastor count? It's not prayer band. It's not choir. It is the ushers that take the attendance and keep the records of the church. Number five. Number five. Brother Lekon. They make sure that the sanctuary is kept clean. They make sure that what? The sanctuary is kept clean. The church is kept clean. In some churches, depending on how large the church is, you can have a group of people we call sanctuary keepers who clean the church. 
But where there are no sanctuary keepers, where it is still a small church, it is still the usher's responsibility to clean the church. Thank you very much, sir. Then my two sisters that volunteered, they are number uh, six and seven. Yes, ma. My sister Dara, see me. They open the church. Please, let's clap for her. We have mentioned that they open the church, but do you know that ushers are supposed to come first and they are supposed to leave last? Ushers are supposed to come when first and leave last. But what are the things that we see about our ushers today? Are they the ones who come first? And no answer very well. Are, are the ushers the ones that come first? So, if you know that ushers are supposed to come first, and some ushers are not coming first, that means God wants you to join the ushers. Yes. Ah, or, or why do you think that uh, I was asking you? Your voice was very loud when you are saying, yes, yes. Why do you think I was asking you? You thought I was going to tell the, all the ushers to kneel down? No. One of the reasons why we are taking this teaching and this training and this Bible study is when we identify the shortcomings or the right way of doing it. And you see that those people are not doing it right, you begin to do it right. Last week, when we told you about the choir, we said anybody that will be in the choir, you must be using your voice to be singing the praise of God. How can you use the same mouth that you are using to praise God? You are now using that same mouth to be singing Saridon P. Saido Shupa. You are using the same mouth, the same mouth that you are using to sing unto the Lord. Sing about the beauty of his holiness. You are now using that same mouth to be singing Jupa. You are using the same mouth to be singing Japa, Shapa, all those slangs. The same mouth. Listen to what the Bible says in the book of James. He said, have you ever seen a river that is bringing both cold and hot water? No. If you want to be in the choir, that your mouth, you must use it for God. That your voice must be used for God. So going forward, we don't want to be hearing people tell us and say, pastor, 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 is it true that this song this song is, is not a Christian song. You yourself, you know whether that song is a Christian song or not a Christian song. You know. The person singing the song, you can see big chain on his neck. You can see tattoo all over his body. You can see him dancing with guests. You are now saying it's a Christian song. You yourself, you know whether it's a Christian song. So it's the same thing. Once you know that ushers ought to be doing this thing and the ushers are not doing it, what God is telling you is that you should begin to do it. And I'll give you a practical example. Several years ago, I think I had just gotten married then. I used to attend Winner's Chapel and there was full scarcity. So I said, instead of going all the way to Ota in Canaan land, let's look for a church around here and be attending. Because once we leave by 5 a.m., we will not get back home until 5 p.m. because of the traffic. I said, ah, we just married now. Ah, we will not be able to enjoy ourselves again. We'll go to work Monday to Friday, at times Saturday. On Sunday, that we, I should be able to look at my wife. She should be able to look at my face. We will still be in church. Ah. So we said, let's look for one church around. And we found a small parish that they had just planted, a small parish of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, the Lord's Glory. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, we bust up on Akute Ajumo Road. And the Sunday that we went was the second Sunday that they were having their service. They started the previous Sunday, we went on the second Sunday. And I discovered in that church that they had maybe two or three ushers. One of the ushers was also a minister. So from altar, he will come and collect offering. <laughs> and then he will go back there. It's a small church. They just started. Maybe they were about eight. 
So I just told myself, I said, there is a need in this parish, and that need is the need of usher. So I did workers in training. When they asked which department I want to serve, I said, I want to be in the ushering department. The reason why God places you in a church is not just for you to come and hear the message. It's for you to identify the need in that church and fill that church. If you attend a church and you see that every time you come to that church, the door is always locked. God is telling you, be an usher so that you can always come on time and be opening the door. If you come into a particular church and every time you enter the restroom, the restroom means toilet, you see that they have not cleaned their toilet. God is showing you that thing so that you can begin to clean the toilet. Somebody will say, ah, I can't do that. You are doing it for God. You are doing it for your you, because of your love for God. If you clean toilet, does, do, do, do they write it on your forehead when you go out? It's not written on your forehead. And the truth about it is that every one of us, we clean our toilet at home. Yes or no? If you can clean your toilet at home, why can't you clean the toilet in the house of God? After all, you are the one using it. So when you notice that the, the ushers are coming in late, or they are not arranging the church or cleaning the church, God is telling you to join the ushers. Now let's take the last sister. Yes, ma'am. Sister Shemilori. Yes. Thank you very much. Please let's clap for her. When the service is going around and you see children running up and down, it's the ushers that we tell them, go and sit down. And you know what many of us do as parents. When they tell your children to sit down, you frown your face. You say, oh, that usher's own is too much. It's only my own child that is always speaking. Ah! Don't mind that mama. Her own is too much. As if she does not have children. Don't mind that brother. See as his face strong like he did. But he's doing the right thing. If we allow all the children to be running up and down, will the service be organized? Will there be order in the service? As much as we are saying that the ushers to also be friendly, they must still maintain order and discipline. Now, let us look at some of the responsibilities that some of us didn't mention. It is also expected that our ushers will always be smiling. Tell your neighbor, say ushers are to smile. Because we say ushers are to be doorkeepers and they are to maintain order, does not mean they must always frown their face and come to church with cane. Because we have called you usher, does not mean you come with koboko. Ah, uh -uh. no, we don't allow that here. Even if you are going to correct the children or members of the church, you correct them with love. You correct them with a smile. Every usher must be able to manage everyone who comes into the church and make the person feel happy. Usher must not make people feel worse than when they were entering the church. Am I speaking to somebody? By the time you see ushers, if you are carrying problem and coming, that problem should be lifted. In some churches, the role of the ushers has evolved and that they even call them greeters. I know I've shared it here before. In some churches, they have divided the ushering department to have many other departments. To have the people they call greeters. Those ones will stand outside. As you are coming into the church, they will be clapping. I say, welcome, welcome. Thank you for coming. God bless you. We love you. We love you. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Some of our mommies are laughing. <laughs> that is why I said we must have times three of the ushers that we have now. So that by the time mommy or guinea is coming, as our car is coming, the ushers are clapping and say, oh, we are so happy to see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome to church. And all the people that are passing, they are wondering, ah, kilo shelebe. <laughs> what is happening there? By the time they are wondering what is happening there, 
day to day, we say, let me also go and check what they are doing. And then they will come. And that's how church grows. We don't want all shots that we go and meet people and say, Madam, Madam, if your child cry again, you and your child, I will send you out. No. <laughs> that, that one is not an usher. When a, somebody's child is crying, what is your child supposed to do? You help and carry the baby. You ask the woman, ah, is it that your baby is hungry and you want to feed her? If the woman says yes, you say, okay, let me keep a chair. Take, I will take a chair outside. You feed her outside. Don't feed her in the open. No. We will take you to one corner and you feed her. You find out why is the baby crying. Uh, the baby has uh, messed up the pampas. So, okay, we have a, a toilet. Please, let's pass through the back so that people will not know what is happening. You take them to the restroom. You help them. That is the work of ushers. Ushers are supposed to help. Ushers are also supposed to be observant. Don't get carried away. Be checking what the people are doing. Be checking what the people are saying. The Almighty God will help our ushers in Jesus' name. I know we have more time, while we are, but let's quickly rush through the qualifications to talk about certain scenarios. One of the primary requirements of somebody that will be an usher is that the person must be born again. Somebody will say, Pastor, is it not just to stand? Last ma, they are like ushers now. Are they all born again? They are not born again. But last ma is walking on the road. You, you are walking in the church. Because in the church, there are so many kind of people that come in. How many of us remember the testimony of the area pastor? He said that when he joined the redeemed Christian church of God and he became a worker, he noticed that the ushers were the ones that used to give the first timers coke. So he told the pastor, I want to join the people giving coke. At least if they don't finish the coke, we'll be the one to drink the coke. <laughs> so he joined the ushering department. And he said the very first day, while he was doing that work, while he was discussing with the first timers, one of the first timers told him, said, we just came from River. And he thought that the man said he came from, uh, the lady said she came from River State. He said, hey, you came from River State? The person said, no, we came from River. You came from Cross River? He said, no, we just came from water. We are mommy water. He said, when he heard, he said, wow. <laughs> he said, eh, what did you say? He said, we are mommy water. He said, immediately he ran and went to the pastor. By the time he was getting to the church, the, the other person that came with that lady was already manifesting in the church. They were doing deliverance for her. And he said that was the day he told the pastor. He said, me and my wife, we are no more doing your shit. <laughs> he said, the pastor said, no, it doesn't happen every time. He said, no, we are no more doing your Let us be in Sunday school. He said, that's from that day. They changed themselves to Sunday school. So that he will not be ushering demons. In the church of God, to serve as an usher, you need to be born again. You don't know that man that you are shaking. You don't know that sister that you are shaking. That mommy that you are shaking the hand, you don't know. So many ushers become frightened. When they hear in the course of the service, they see people that they have shook their hand when they were coming in. They see them manifesting and say, ah, I am a witch. I am a banje. You now remember, ah, and I shook his hand. Oh. But once you are born again, you know that the blood of Jesus will speak for you. So for you to be an usher in the house of God, you must be born again. I hope you also remember that when they are doing deliverance, it's ushers that stand behind the, behind the people so that they will not fall and injure their head. If the usher is not born again and the demon wants to start beating people, who do you think the demon will start with? Uh -huh. The demon will start with the usher. So if you are already in the ushering department and you are not born again, or you are born again and you are still playing with sin, Ah, on Power Sunday, we are doing Power Sunday this Sunday. It's going to be a deliverance service. Those, if they tell you to come and stand behind somebody, tell them that your leg is paining you. <laughs> <laughs> so
so that the demon will not pounce on you as he did to the seven sons of Scepha and tore their clothes. Number two requirement. Anyone that will be an usher must be available. In fact, in the redeemed Christian church of God, the motto of the worker is fat, faithfulness, availability, and teachability. You must be available. If you, you cannot be the best usher when you are not available in church. No matter how good your suit is, some people, they have the best suit, but they can't serve as ushers because they are never in church. So ushers or being an usher is not a function of the uniform or because you can afford it. Neither is being an usher a function of the fact that you are very beautiful and handsome. No. Yes, we demand that you are fit. We demand that you are healthy. But you must be available. Being an usher is not a function of the Queen's English that you can speak. Because demons don't understand English. Everyone that we serve as an usher must be available. You must be available. You must be present in all the services. If you are not there, who are you ushering? First Peter chapter 4, verse 10. Can somebody help me with that? First Peter chapter 4, verse 10. Another person, First Peter chapter 5, 2C and 2E. Yes, Sister Ganiat. Every one of you should you use whatsoever gift, gift you have. have. Receive to serve others. To serve others. You are to use your gift to serve others. Jesus saved us so that we can serve others. Not that so that we can become chairman. Yes, let's go to the next person. First Peter 5, 2, C and E. First Peter 5, 2, 2 C and E. Mommy Wise, help us with that. First Peter 5, 2C and E. Yes, ma. Okay, let me read here to save our time. It says, be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing. That's the C. Because you are willing, as God wants you to be, not pursuing dishonest gain. So, observe as an usher, you must do it willingly. You must be available. That same Bible passage also tells us about the second thing, that you must also not be greedy. Anyone that we serve in the ushering department, you, you must not be greedy. Because when you are collecting offering and you are counting other people's money, you must not be tempted. That is why in the redeemed Christian church of God, if you are not working, if you don't have work or business, we will not put you in ushering department too. Because there is temptation there. Somebody that has not eaten at home, the person now is now counting money. If 500 naira drop, what do you think the person will do? Eh? I can't hear you. The person will do what? Divert the money. The person will just use leg and match the money. When they tell the person, shift to the other side, the person will say, no, I like this seat. I like this seat. I don't want... They don't know that the leg is stepping on something. When they say, okay, go and collect the out, they say, ah, I'm tired. I don't want to get up. Until everybody leaves, the person will now stretch. Ah, let me do a small exercise. Mm, go to the left, then come to the right, pick the money, put in the pocket. Anyone that will serve in the ushering department must also have zeal. Zeal means you are serving God wholeheartedly. You must do it with zeal. Anything, in fact, I always recommend to people that any service that you will render to God must be a zealous service. It must have action. How can you be serving God slothfully? Any service that you are doing sluggishly is not an acceptable service. 
ushers are to serve with action. Colossians chapter 3, 23 to 24. Sister, let me please help us with that. Colossians chapter 3, 23 to 24. Number four is ushers should not be greedy. We have read that. Yes, Colossians 3, 23 to 24. We need to round up, please. Colossians chapter 3, 23 to 24. And whatsoever you do, whatsoever you do, do it aptly. Do it aptly. Do it with action. Do it with your strength. Do it aptly. How can Osha, you tell Osha, bring your free basket? And Osha is now dragging feet. Dragging feet. No. Osha has to be smart. Anything you are doing, you do it with the whole of your heart. Yes, continue, man. As to the Lord. Do it as if you are doing it unto God. And not unto men. And not unto men. Knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward. Knowing that of the Lord you will receive your reward. Ushers must be smart. Ushers must be smart. They don't drag their feet. Ushers must always be alert. Ushers are not the ones that are supposed to be dozing during service. The last thing I'd like to talk about before I take the general comments is that there is no limit to being an usher. Because some of our people, when they come and join us, they say, I'm too old, much that you passed up. Me, this usher. Ah, who told you? Any service unto the Lord, you are never too old. I wish, how many of us have been to redemption camp before for the Holy Ghost service? Okay, only a few of us. Have you seen old ushers there? Have you also seen young ushers there? So there is no age limit. They don't discriminate about age. You, are, you can't be too young to be an usher, and you cannot be too old to be an usher. Numbers chapter 4, verse 3. Numbers chapter 4, verse 3. In Numbers chapter 4, verse 3, the Bible talks about people that were ushers from the age of 30 to 50. There are some of us, we are, we are not yet up to 50. We are saying, mm, no, that one, that one is too small for me. Ah! The work of an usher is not too small for anybody. In fact, many of us who call ourselves pastors, by the time we get to a place like Redemption Cup, we also act as ushers. If we are having a special program at the region, we have a special program in the zone, we have a special program at the province, we act as ushers. It doesn't stop us from being an usher. The mere fact that they have ordained you does not stop you from being an usher. Ordination does not stop you from serving God. Because we see people after they ordain them. Is it, they, 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 are, are you no more in the ushering department? Is it, I'm now a deacon. Deacon is supposed to be sitting on the altar. Ah. Is it, ah, mommy, what happened? We are no more seeing in the Don't you know I'm now an AP? AP is supposed to be sitting on the altar. Say, ah. Daddy, we didn't see you in the department again. Don't you know I'm now a full pastor? Your ordination status does not affect your service. It doesn't affect it. Your title can be a reverend. It can be bishop. It can be pope. But it doesn't stop you from serving. The reason why God called you is to serve. Now, let's take general comments before we close. Comments. And which areas you have seen that you do understand? You are seeing some ushers. The way you are seeing those ushers, you don't understand it. This is the time to ask the question. Or you wanted to be an usher somewhere. They didn't allow you. Please, this is the for time to ask that question. And then I may be able to explain to you one or two reasons why they didn't allow you to be an usher. Questions. If you don't ask questions, may I will ask? Uh, because I want you to be ushers. Yes, Sister Abigail. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, no, the time a colleague said that the only job is to be in heaven, as we all know, is just to be singing praises to God, and then it only requires the constant that are relevant to heaven, and then we, the other departments that are not relevant. So, I want to share more like that. And they all just in heaven. Thank you very much. I've not been to heaven before. <laughs> <laughs> it's important that I start by telling you I've not been to heaven before. But from what I have read about the heaven in the Bible, in the book of Revelation, I know heaven is an organized place. 
I know that the 24 elders, they stay in one place. I know that the cherubims and the seraphims, they stay in another place. And by the time we will also join them and be singing, somebody will tell us where to stay now. Eh? So I want to assume that the same way we are doing it here is the same way which will be done in heaven. That the ushers will tell us where to stay. Yes, the ushers too, they sing. In church, don't, don't ushers sing here on earth. Even though the choir is the person leading the song, the ushers too, they sing. The ushers also dance. So, but don't, even before going to heaven, let's do the one that is on earth here. Yeah. On earth, we need ushers on earth. We need ushers. So it is not a sin for somebody to join the ushering department. It is not a sin for somebody to join the teaching department. It is not a sin for somebody to join the security department. It is not a sin for somebody to join the children department. Somebody must teach our children now. If you now say that in heaven, the only thing we will be doing is that we will be singing. So all of us must be in choir. It won't work. Sister Abigail, am I clear? Uh, like we have a visitor today now in our midst. Imagine brother Daniel comes to church. And he now sees all of us. We are in choir. Everybody is sitting in choir. How do you think the brother will feel? Eh? <laughs> Grandma, the, the brother will say, ah, it is as if uh, something is wrong in this place. So. Or you enter a church, everybody is usher. If everybody is ushering, he is in the ushering department. Who will sit down now? And who will sing? So we must have people in different departments. Thank you. Yes, the next question. Thank you for that powerful and wonderful question. I love that question. Please let's celebrate Jesus for that question. The reason why a lot of us actually don't want to join ushering is because of that question that our sister asked. When you tell people, go and sit down this way, and they don't answer you, or they even eye you, you look at yourself and say, ah, I'm not Hey. It is me that they have insulted like this. Ah, how I wish you knew me before I became born again. Ah. Eh, when I was still in the world, I tell you to go and sit down, you not sit down. I would have washed your face. You know, in church, Osha cannot wash anybody's face. There are two approaches, two things you must do, which is why we said that the usher must be born again. Before service, every usher is supposed to have prayed at home. You are praying first and foremost for that service. You are also praying for the power of God. Listen to what the Bible says. The Bible says that in the days of his power, the people shall be willing. In the days of his power, the people shall be willing. When God's power is upon an usher, when you tell people to do something, they do it. Scripture, in the days of his power, the people will be willing. When usher is carrying power, when you tell people where to sit, they will sit. It's not about frowning face or bony face, but because of what you have done in the secret place, in the place of prayer. Second scripture. The heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord, and like a river, it directs it which way it should go. When you pray, God touches the heart of that person. Anything you tell that person, that person does it. The reason why you tell them, and they shake their head every time, you are not praying enough. That's the first aspect. The second aspect, people always listen and obey people that love them. Everybody will obey and listen to people that love them or they perceive that care for them. If as usher, every time you are always frowning at them, every time you are always knocking their children's head, every time you are always telling the woman, oh, you're picking, oh, you're picking, oh, you're picking. Gradually, you don't need, you have not beat the child. Though. The only thing you are always doing every time you see the child, you frown. Every time you, see, you say, Madam, you're picking, don't they go? Madam, you're picking, don't they go? Mommy, eh, eh, 
Indirectly, you are sending a message to the mother of the child. You are sending an indirect message that you don't like the child. So every time you the mother sees you as she's entering the church, she believes that you don't like her child and you don't like her. So when you tell her anything, she will not listen. But every time you see somebody, as the person is coming to church, you say, God bless you, thank you for coming. How was your week? The person say, fine. After service, when the person is going, you say, bro, God bless you. Have a blessed week. When the person is coming to church next Sunday, will the person be happy with you or not? The person will be happy and will not want to offend you. So when you tell the person, sit here, the person will see you as his friend and will obey you. I've told you two ways. Number one, the spiritual, you must pray. Number two, you must be friendly. And I'll give you scripture. Proverbs. It says, to him that is showeth himself friendly, hath many friends. He that showeth himself friendly, hath many friends. If you discover that your friend has many friends, just check. Check around yourself, around you. That your friend has many friends. Check most of the time. The person is also very friendly. That your friend that doesn't have many friends, most of the time, the person is solo. The person is not always talking and gisting with people. He that has many friends, anybody that will have many friends, must show himself friendly. But you, every time they are passing in front of you, even though you are not doing anything, you do as if you are pressing something on your phone. They greet you. Good evening, ma. He said, mm. Good morning, sir. Mm. Good afternoon. Mm. It's as if they are disturbing you. After one week, they won't greet you again. Abby, all the ones they have been greeting you, it's difficult for you to answer them. You can't open your mouth to answer them. In fact, some of them say, ah, when they see you talk, they say, ah, so mommy, I'm sorry. If you don't go deaf and dumb, me. Because every time you greet us, and you can't make friends by giving monosyllable answer. How are you? Fine. How was your day? Good. The rain for? Yes. Have you eaten? No. Are you hungry? No. Ah, uh -uh. What is it? You don't have friends that way. You must be able to respond. How was your day? Wow, my day was wonderful. How was yours? The person will be happy. In the short time that you are welcoming somebody into the church, you are saying, bro, God bless you. I'm so happy you came to church today. You see, I reserved a seat for you. A seat under the fan. Won't the person follow you? But as the person is coming, you say, bro, where I tell you to sit today? If you don't sit there, me and you, we go enter a mo. I no go look at your face. So the person can never follow you. The person won't follow you. Any other questions so that we round up? Yes, ma. Hallelujah. Be a worker. Yes, ma. But must everyone in the church be a worker? No, fine. And can any can everybody in the church be baptized, but not being a worker. Thank you, ma'am. I will start from your first question. We said everybody should be a worker. Yes, that is our dream. And that was the mandate that Jesus gave. Matthew chapter 28. He says, go ye into the world. Make disciples of all nations. We are to make people disciples. A disciple does the work of the master, which is the work of a worker. A disciple will not come to church and sit down. A disciple will work for God. Yes, all of us will not be in the same department. The choir will have their seat. For people that are in teaching ministry, they will only teach during Sunday school. After Sunday school, they are part of the general service. People that are in house fellowship, they will only teach in the evening. In the morning, they are part of the service. People that are in children's department, they will teach the children when the other classes are going on. People that are in sanitation or security, they will be doing their own thing. It doesn't affect the service. Even the ushers, the mere fact that they are ushers doesn't mean that they will not jot during message. It doesn't mean they will not pray when we are leading prayer. All of us will be workers and we will still be in the church. Then the second question that our mommy asked, she asked us about, can everybody be baptized? 
that is it possible for somebody to be baptized and not be a worker? Yes. In fact, in the redeemed Christian church of God, we have qualified who our members are. For every parish of the redeemed Christian church of God, we have a hierarchy, and they will always teach it in the workers in training. Number one, the first day you enter the redeemed Christian church of God, that is level one. The first time you are coming. If you come the following Sunday, you will enter level two. At least some of us will now recognize you. You are no more first timer. When we say first timers in the house, can they rise on their feet? You will not rise up. All of us that you are seeing in the church, even the general of our pastor, he, had boy, he entered the church one day. He came as a first timer. When you keep on coming consistently, we will tell you, oh yeah, sister, you have come two weeks. Because when we have noticed over time, that when people start coming to church, they come to church, they go. They come to church, they go. They will not grow spiritually. And God wants us to grow. We will tell you, oh, yeah, do believers class. Believers class is what they call foundational class in other churches. Foundational class. There they will teach you how to pray, how to read the Bible, and about water baptism. So somebody who has been coming to church for three years and has not done believers class, the person who has done believers class, seniors that person. And in fact, in the redeemed Christian church of God, we recognize our members with the baptismal certificate. Without baptismal certificate, you are not a member. It's only pastor that knows you, that you doesn't know you. Because to collect scholarship, you must present your baptismal certificate. To collect anything from the church in terms of welfare, at national level, you must present your certificate. So somebody who has now done Believers class, uh, uh, the believers class, and uh, the baptismal class. The next thing we will tell the person: say, now that you are now you've been baptized, the next thing for you is to be a worker, start working for God, because it does not stop and end by you knowing how to pray and then also knowing how to read the Bible. You must also begin to serve God, because the more you do something, the better you become. Haven't you seen all those baba? The reason why they know how to bar very well is they do it every time. The more you do it, the better you become in anything or any field of endeavor. The more you cook, the sweeter your soup will be. The reason why your soup is not sweet now is because you have not cooked enough. Cook more. When you make bagiri the first time, palm on one side, beans on one side, don't worry. Cook it again. The next time that you do it, you see that palm and, and beans, they will be on the same side. The third time you will cook it, by the time you are cooking the tenth one, somebody will taste it and say, ah! How come your beggar is like that one that is in Mokola roundabout in Ibadan? Because you have been doing it. The woman in Mokola roundabout, she cooks beggar every day. So she becomes better. So we tell you to become better. Start working for God. Work in nursing department. The more you do it in nursing department, you begin to know many more things and begin to learn. Then after a while, we tell you, apart from you being a worker, you can do what we call schools of disciples. Then you go to school of disciples. They train you one year. After that one, you come back again. We tell you that you can do Redeem Bible College. You learn some more. We tell you you can be an house fellowship leader. You do house fellowship leaders training. After that, we say, okay, you are even qualified for ordination. You have been serving for four years. Come and be a deacon. After you have become a deacon. After four years again, we say, okay, now you have served very well when we made you deacon. No scandal. No wala. You are still maintaining your humility. And you are still learning. And you are growing in the faith. Now become assistant pastor. When you become assistant pastor, it's not for you to relax. It is for you to keep on working harder and more than you were doing as a deacon. So that in four years' time, we'll look at you again and say, wow, we put you in charge of a church. That church has grown. You started that church with eight members. Now you people are 250. You people are 300. You have bought a land. You have done this. You have done that. You keep doing water baptism. We'll make you a full pastor. So that are, those are the steps of growth. You can't stay in one place. By the time you become a parish pastor, there is an area pastor. After area pastor, there is zonal pastor now. After zonal pastor, there is assistant pastor in charge of province. After that, there is pastor in charge of province. After that, there is pastor in charge of region. After that, there is an AGU, assistant general of Asia. After that, there is deputy general of Asia. After that, who says you can't be general of Asia? In the redeemed Christian church of God, anybody can be the general of Asia. Pastor Iadebo, he was not the founder of this church. But it's now the current general of Asia. And go and check every other mission too. Go and check. The person who is the current of Asia was not the one who started it. 
the current overseer of CAC. His name is not Baba Lola now. Uh -uh. The Almighty God will help us. Any other question before we round up? Yes, we'll take the last one. Ma? You also want to ask. I want to ask the work of Oshai. When you see a lady wearing something that is not proper, coming to church, you are addressed to me. I don't care to talk to the lady. I don't care to talk to the lady, baby, to not come, to not attend the church with you. I don't know. For a few times, I used to see some things like that. Thank you very much. Our sister's question is when somebody is not properly dressed, will ushers come the person at the door and say, Auntie, this is your clothes. It's not, you didn't dress well, or go back home and change. Ushers don't do that, or they don't do that in the redeemed Christian Church of God. The training that we have given our ushers is anybody that is not properly dressed, we will still allow you into the church, but you not sit in front. Eh? You cannot see it in front. If you are wearing micro mini skirts or you are wearing transparent clothes, they will hide you in a corner that pastor cannot see you. Not only pastor, they will hide you in a corner where the married men, they will not see you. They will put you in one corner. Only you will be in that corner. That is how they have been trained. They will not be rude to you because we don't know what brought you to the church. The church is a solution center. It's a spiritual hospital. Church is spiritual hospital. You don't drive people away from church. That's why when you wear dreadlock and you come here, we won't chase you. Uh, we'll tell you to come. As you keep on hearing the word of God, we expect that word of God to begin to tell you, this is your dreadlock. It's not correct. By the time you yourself, you read it inside the Bible. Something we just tell you one day and say, this thing I'm doing is not correct. I've seen a lot in my short time in pastoring. A lot of people who had come in here with dreadlock, and today they are no more carrying dreadlock. I have seen people who were wearing trousers, and today they are no more wearing trousers. And we never call them once and say, Auntie, why are you wearing trousers? No. You just be teaching the word of God. And let them be hearing the word of God. Let them also be reading the word of God. It is God that transforms a life. It is God. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. Yes, we'll take the last one. I hope I answered your question. Yes, ma. Hallelujah. Question that ask, uh, uh, ask this about dressing. How should Usher? The second I want to ask is that family members, as, like a couple, can they ask us? Can they start in the department? Can the husband and wife start in the department? Thank you very much. The truth is that there is no law that says two of you can serve in the same department. But in the redeemed Christian Church of God, we are very careful, especially when it comes to the issue of money. You know, when it comes to the issue of money, it's better that husband and wife will not serve together. Husband will collect the offering. He will say, I'm counting the offering with my wife inside the vestry. You know, that one is not very good. The Yorubas have a proverb. They said, anybody that is helping a blind man to peel a uh, granite, what must you be doing? Hey, mommy said it in Yoruba. And it for you. Buekpa. Kino man she. Oman Sufi. If you are helping a blind man to, to peel granite so that he will know that you are not eating his granite, you'll be whistling. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot how to whistle. Uh, you know, I'm married now for a long time. It's when you are not married that you'll be whistling. Uh, so when you are whistling... <laughs> So when you are whistling, you must be whistling so that the blind man knows that you are not eating his granite. So we also want a situation whereby we don't want a situation whereby when you and your wife you are counting money, somebody will now bring rumor and say that they are stealing church money. So that's why we don't encourage it. But there is no law that says you should not do it. Both of you can do it, but the two of you will not be counting money together. I hope I've answered your question, ma'am. Do we have any other question? Okay, in the absence of any other question, how many of us want to be ushers? How many of us want to be ushers? I want to be an usher. You did not raise up your hand last week that you'll be in the choir. You want to be in ushering department. How many of us want to be ushers? 
Nobody's raising up their hand. I trust that the Holy Spirit will speak to you when you get home in Jesus' name. I want you to, where you are seated, to speak to the Lord. Say, Father, thank you for what you have taught me tonight. I will not fail you in Jesus' name. Some of us, God is calling us to be ushers and we will not fail him. We will not fail him. Speak to the Lord. Say, Father, I will not fail you. I will not fail you in the name of Jesus. Daddy, I will not fail you. I will not fail you in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Second prayer point, you are going to be praying for those that are serving as ushers. You will say, Father, for everyone serving in the ushering department, they will not miss their reward in Jesus' name. Lift up your voice and cry to God. Father, we pray for everyone serving in the ushering department. Daddy, they will not miss their reward. They will not miss their reward in the name of Jesus. They will not miss their reward in Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed. The last prayer point, you will say, Father, anoint our ushers. Let them carry power. Okay, lift up your voice. If an usher can shake somebody and the person will receive healing. Father, we ask that you anoint our ushers. You anoint our ushers. Let them carry power. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. King of glory, we thank you for